Welcome to Krista Paints a Masterpiece Bonus Edition. That's right. This is not a regular Krista Paints a Masterpiece. This one is going to be a little bit different, a little bit special. I'm going to be talking about materials. So we're going to get into a little bit of the specifics of what makes watercolour so unique. If you're not particularly interested in watercolour techniques and you just love watching me be a goofball, then I think you should still keep watching. You may learn something and you may enjoy yourself. So let's talk about the most important component of watercolour painting. It is not the pigments. It is not the brushes. It is not the water. Well, no, actually the water is very important. It is the paper. Looks like regular paper, doesn't it? But watercolour paper is entirely unique. So what makes watercolour paper unique? The most important aspect of really good quality, useful watercolour paper is the sizing. And no, I'm not talking about the differences in sizes. <laughs> sizing is a specific type of glue that is infused into the fibres of the paper. And it does a couple of things. Firstly, it actually repels the water. What? I know. Why would it repel the water? Surely watercolour is about getting water and pigment onto the paper. Yes, true. However, this repellent quality means that the watercolours sit on the surface briefly and you have the opportunity to move them around. Swishy swish. Get the colours all moving and blending together. Mmm, making lovely watercolour effects. And the second thing that it does is it prevents the pigments from soaking in too much and staining the fibres of the paper. It means that you can still lift things off, you can move things around, you can adjust and correct, which is super important if you're not totally accurate 100% of the time. I mean, who is really? So let's have a little look at the paper in action. Number one, we're going to put some water on and you will see it has a shiny shiny sheen to it. That shiny shiny sheen means that the water has not soaked immediately in. It's sitting a little bit on the surface and so then if I add a bit of pigment Oh, look at that. Ooh, it all flows around. If the paper did not have the sizing glue, then that pigment would more or less soak straight in and we wouldn't have the opportunity of letting it kind of flow around and create the lovely soft edges that you get from a wet in wet wash. <laughs> Now a lot of watercolour paper that you would buy at newsagents or $2 shops purports itself to be watercolour paper but actually it's not usable. Most of the time it doesn't have any sizing or if it does it's incredibly cheap sizing that doesn't work. It will not repel water for any length of time. It will not allow you to move things and lift things off and the third and very sad thing that happens when you try and use paper that doesn't have sizing, it will deteriorate after even one or two washes. And what I mean by deteriorate is the fibres will pill up and you'll just be left with an absolute mess and you'll be crying underneath your table saying, <laughs> Why can't I do watercolours? I am here to tell you today, folks, it's not that you can't do watercolours. But if you have paper that does not have sizing, you can't do watercolours. Not because of you, because of the paper. It's not your fault, it's a paper fault. 
The paper is the bad guy. You're a good guy. The paper is the bad guy. So how do you determine which paper has sizing and which paper doesn't have sizing? Huh? What was that? Unfortunately, it does come from experience. I would definitely say a good indicator for a watercolour paper is that it's 100% cotton and minimum 300 GSM. A lot of papers will say that they're 300 GSM, but they'll be cellulose. Now what is cellulose? Cellulose is kind of mashed up trees, basically. It's wood pulp, wood, wood fibres. Whereas cotton is 100% cotton fibres. And just to get those to stick together most of the time, they need to use at least a decent sizing, which will allow you to work on the paper. Now some sizing is a little bit too aggressive. So on this paper, you can see I've put in a couple of washes and then tried to lift a little bit off and it hasn't just lifted a little bit off, it's lifted almost all the pigment off. So you can get sizing that is too repellent. Now generally it does feel waxy on the surface. So good quality watercolour paper that has decent sizing. Can you hear that? It's dry. Whereas, I mean, that probably sounds exactly the same, but the feeling is different. This one feels waxy and it works exactly like wax. It will be absolutely repellent. So too repellent. It needs to be a balance here. You don't want it to soak in. You don't want it to repel completely. It needs to be somewhere in the middle. Now, looking at watercolour papers, something else you might notice is that there are different grades of texture. So you might have rough or you'll have uh, medium, which is also sometimes called cold press. And then you will have smooth, also sometimes known as hot press. Now, the difference between those three grades of texture is literally just how much texture there is on the surface. Now, how this will affect the end result of your work is simply that it's harder to do very fine details the more textured your paper is. Personally, I use medium or cold press for all of my paintings uh, because I believe that that has a nice kind of middle ground between having a little bit of texture which creates interest but not quite so much texture that it's really hard to have any details. Huh? Oh, that? Now, GSM is another thing that you will see in reference to watercolour paper. You can have 90 GSM, 180 GSM, 300 GSM, 425 GSM, 600 GSM, 1200 GSM. What that is referencing is grams per square metre. GSM. Yes, that's right. Grams per square metre. And it's referencing how much of the fibres, whatever fibres are being used, whether they're cotton fibres or cellulose fibres, how much of that is compressed into the surface. So it kind of relates to thickness, but not 100%. You can get 300 G GSM that feels thinner than another kind of 300 GSM, but neither of them is lying necessarily. It could simply just be that one is more compressed than the other. Generally speaking, the way that GSM affects the quality of your picture or affects the way that you paint is how much it buckles once you start to put water on it. You can see the surface of this paper has already started to buckle from where I wet it down earlier. The thicker the paper, generally the less it will buckle but I also do tape down my paper and that can help prevent it from buckling a little bit. Most of the time though, watercolour paper will buckle to a certain degree. So generally, the higher the GSM, the thicker the paper will be, roughly, and the less likely it will be to buckle. So that's it. Short little episode all about paper. 
If you are thinking of taking up watercolouring, I would say that the first thing you need to do is invest in good paper. I know it's expensive. I know it's expensive. But honestly, you will not be able to achieve good results if you have poor quality watercolour paper. And what I mean by good results is, you know, a painting like moi. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe.